Let's take a look at another system of equations here. Here it's a linear system of equations. We have the uh, line y equals negative 2x plus 5 and y equals 3x minus 1. We're interested in finding a point of intersection where these lines cross, um, and we'd like to use graphing in order to do that. If we look at uh, the first equation here, notice that our slope would be negative 2 over 1, and our y-intercept would be 5. And we can plot that point here up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Slope of negative 2 over 1 is going to go down 2 over 1. We're going to be coming this direction. Um, and we can get a couple of additional points in here to try to make our sketch a little bit better. So there we have one line. My next equation over here is y equals 3x minus 7. Here my slope is going to be 3 over 1, and my y-intercept is going to be negative 7. So in this case, I'm going to have to go down 7 for my y-intercept. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's going to be my first point. And then my slope is going to be 3 over 1. So I'm going to go up 3 over 1 from here, up 3 and over 1, and then up 3, 1, 2, 3, and over 1 here. And now as you go through and sketch these points in here, ah, it should go up a little bit steeper there. Um, but you can see that this intersection point here, first of all, lies between like 2 and 3 on the x, and it's just a smidge above the y-axis, maybe. Um, it's kind of hard to tell when we're looking at our graphing lines here. So graphing is a nice way to get a visual idea of approximately where those answers are, but especially when we're dealing with solutions that are fractional in nature, it is sometimes a little bit frustrating to get very precise solutions. Um, what I'd like to do uh, in this video is give you a view of how you can use the TI calculator in order to find a more precise value for your intersection points in a, in a situation like this. When we start, we always want to go into the y equals value or y equals location in order to place our equations. And we're going to let the calculator do some of our work for us. Um, in this case, we're going to go ahead and put y equals negative 2x plus 5 in for the first equation. And again, if you have any other equations in here already, you'd want to erase them before you start. So we're going to have y equals negative 2x plus 5 as our first choice, and then 3x minus 7 as our second choice. By putting both of them, by putting both of the equations in the y equals, both of them will show up on the graph of my system. Now, it's generally a good idea to start a graph with kind of our standard window size. So I often come in and choose option 6 here, Z standard. And what this does is it provides a graph that goes from negative 10 to positive 10 in the x-coordinate direction and from negative 10 to positive 10 in the y-coordinate direction. Um, right now, it also has little markers at every one place. So you can kind of get an idea of what we're looking at. And again, you kind of see a, a graph very similar to what we did here by hand. They are definitely intersecting somewhere there in between 2 and 3, not very far above the y-axis. Um, if you, however, would like to get a better view of where that intersection point is, your calculator can do that. Now, it's very important that you actually sketch the graph first and that you see the intersection in the screen. If you don't actually see where the lines cross, the calculator will not be able to figure it out for you. So here we can definitely see where they cross. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit second trace and that's going to pull up the calculation menu because what I want the calculator to find is the intersection point because that's the spot I'm interested in. So I'm going to scroll down here and choose option 5 for intersect. Now the calculator is going to ask you a couple of questions. The first question is going to be what the first curve is and the second curve is. As long as you only have two equations in your line, it really doesn't matter too much. Right now the first curve is whipping up there. See it's choosing the negative 2x plus 5. The second curve is the y2 equals 3x minus 7. Well that's totally fine. The next question that it's going to ask you is for is a guess of where that intersection point is. And so what you want to do is use the arrows. It'll travel along one of your lines and put it kind of close to where the intersection point happens. In this case, because there's only one intersection point, it doesn't really matter. Um, but in problems where there are more than one intersection points, and we've seen that in just in the last video, 
um, your calculator will only calculate one intersection point at a time. So you'll want to move the cursor as close to the intersection point as possible for your guess and then hit enter. Once you're done, it's going to give you a location for the intersection and then it's going to give you the, uh, the a decimal value that'll go along with that. So notice here our intersection point is at 2.4 for the x coordinate and 0 0.2 for the y coordinate. That very much jives with what we saw in our graph, right, somewhere between 2 and 3 and somewhere slightly above the y-axis, but it actually gives us a much more precise coordinate set that we can use to report for our answer. So that's kind of the process that we use in order to do this. Let's go ahead and uh, just do a couple of additional examples so that you can see what's going on and how this would work using the, the graphing calculator. All right, so here's our next example. Um, this time what we want to do is use y equals 2x squared minus 3x minus 6. And then for our next one, we want to use 2x minus 4. So this time we're going to have a quadratic equation as well as a line for our solution. All right. Now, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and make this a little bit smaller here. There we go so that we will be able to see our um, graphing calculator as well as our problem here on the same on the same video. All right, so let's go ahead. We've got this. Again, it's a nice idea to choose Zoom option six, or you can just go ahead and click on the graph button and it will sketch us a graph. And here you can kind of see a vision of what we have. Now, in terms of your homework, I really would like you to sketch, because we're sol using technology to solve these equations, I'd really like you to sketch a graph of what it is that you see on your screen. Um, and so, for example, going ahead and sketching a graph of 2x minus 4, you're going to have these values that are going here. It doesn't have to be super precise. Um, and you can use the picture that we have over here. But what I would like you to see is that we do have a parabola. It's going to kind of drop a little bit down below here. Oops. It's kind of got a vertex piece a little bit over here on the side. It's going to come up and it's going to intersect somewhere around here and it's going to intersect somewhere around there. Here we go. And then we can kind of connect the points. So not a super fabulous graph, um, but just a general idea of what it is that you're seeing on the picture over here is what I'm after. Now, of course, the points of interest that we ha want to have, we want to identify exactly these intersection points because these points are going to be the solutions to my system of equations. In order to do that again, we're going to go onto the Calc button up here in the graphing menu. So we hit Second Trace to pull that up, and we're going to want to choose Option 5 for Intersect. Again, it'll ask you for the first curve. In this case, it's using the parabola. The second curve, it's using the line, and then it's going to ask you for a guess, and we're going to move the cursor close to our intersection point. Now, um, right now the cursor is right here, and that's great. That's one of our intersection points, so I'm going to just go ahead and hit Enter. Notice here, we for um, the x-coordinate, we have a negative 0.35078111, and y is negative 4.701562. So the calculator is getting a pretty good numerical analysis value of that. Um, for our purposes, just getting it, taking it maybe to two digits after the decimal is fine. Here we would have then a negative 0.35 for an x coordinate and then a negative 4.7 for the y coordinate. And that would be okay for that. And that corresponds with what's showing up in the picture. I would also like to find the intersection point over here because it does in fact cross twice. So go ahead and hit second calc. You're gonna choose option five for intersect. First curve is the quadratic, second curve is the line. And again, no big deal as long as there's only two equations on your y equals screen. But now notice I'm gonna move my cursor up. Right now I want it to be up here so it's close to this other location. Go ahead and hit enter and it's gonna give you the values of that particular intersection point. So in this case, 2.85 and 1.8 and 1.7. and I found two solutions to my system. So what I'm looking for again on your homework as you do these problems is I want a sketch of what you see on the calculator. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect, but try to have your intersection points in the right ballpark and the, and the basic shape of those graphs as part of your, as part of your picture. 
All right, now here we have a quadratic and a linear. We haven't really talked about exponential equations in our class, but there's no reason that a graphing calculator can't sketch a graph of an exponential equation for us. And then we can actually look at an intersection point maybe and see what happens here. So let's try it. Let's go up to our y equals screen. We'll clear out the equations that we have here. Um, for our first equation, we wanna do five times three to the x power. And again, I really encourage you to use the parentheses as you do that. Okay, so there's our five times three to the x for our first equation. And for our second equation, we want negative two x plus seven. We'll go ahead and hit zoom. We'll choose our zoom standard and we'll see what our graph is gonna do for us. Here we have an exponential equation. Uh, it, the way exponential equations work is they start low like this and then start increasing much more quickly up in this direction. Uh, and then we have a line that's coming around this way and it's gonna cut through that point right here. Um, because the exponential graph is gonna continue up in this direction, um, getting higher and higher and more to the right and the, and the uh, line is going to be going downhill, this one point is going to be the only place of intersection for this particular graph. Um, so if we kind of transfer that over here to a picture, we've got somewhere that it's crossing somewhere close to here. It's coming up like this. The other line is coming down like this and crossing eh, somewhere around three or four. So very crooked there. That's okay. So something along this line. And then I can use the calculator's intersection function to find the exact co or the, the coordinates for this particular point. Same deal, nothing new. Uh, second trace, we'll get this. Choose option five for intersect. There's the exponential curve for the second, the linear, or for the first graph, the linear for the second graph. Then we wanna move our guess. Oh, not move the whole calculator, that's okay. Um, Go ahead and move our guess close to where we think it is. And now it's gonna give us a good value for our intersection, 0.24 and 6.52. And that'll be our second point. Again, it's really important when you're doing things on the graphing calculator, you actually have to see the intersection point on your screen. before you use the intersect function. If you know that, if you can kind of estimate what's happening and if it looks like the, the uh, intersection is gonna occur off the screen, keep in mind that you can always click on window here and change the window size. So for example, if you thought that maybe there was gonna be some intersection up here, um, maybe you would wanna change your X max to maybe be 20, and then you can see what's going on a little bit higher. And then once you've changed your window size, you can click on graph, and you'll get a, now my um, x coordinate values in this case are gonna go out to 20 for the x. I guess I really was talking about 20 for the y. If you want the 20 to go, the y value to see what's going on higher on on the y value, you can do this. So now what I've done is I've changed my window to be from negative 10 to positive 20, and my y value to be from negative 10 to positive 20. And in this particular case, you can see uh, they definitely still just are only intersecting in one position. But if you if, if it looks like maybe the graphs are curving in on each other or something like that, you may want to extend the window size in order to see the actual intersection point on the screen, um, which is what the calculator requires for its calculation algorithms. And again, don't forget, once you're done, you can always go back and change the window settings. Or if you choose Zoom standard, that will always take you back to having negative... Um, x values between negative 10 and 10 and y values between negative 10 and 10, which are often good enough for what we're doing um, for, for in-class types of problems. All right, hope that helps. Have fun on the homework assignment. And again, draw please draw a quick sketch of what you see on your calculator screen as well as then using the intersect function to find where um, we actually have a solution to that system.